master here with another video and today I'm going to be showing you how I put together this replica of the rifle utilized by the bounty hunter character gecko on season one of the Mandalorian now those of you who have been following my channel you know that uh, I happen to be friends with the actor who played gecko the bounty hunter and I've also been collaborating with him on some other things and as a special surprise for his appearance at Stockton Con I decided to go ahead and build a replica of his blaster. Now there have been other people who have done versions and you know the, did it to the best of their knowledge but uh, according to Dominic this is the most accurate depiction that he's seen yet of the blaster that he actually used and I consulted with him a lot while I was making it. He just didn't know that I was going to be giving it to him. So uh, you know, that was kind of a cool surprise. I got some cool pictures of him with it. But uh, I've had several people interested in doing cosplay of his character. And so I thought I'd put together a video and show you how I did it. So, uh, come on along. One of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the screen captures of Dominic's character, the Gecko, as he was facing off against the Mandalorian, was that the blaster that he was carrying, although not identical, given what we know about it, uh, was very close or seemed to be based upon the A300, which was utilized by the Rebel Commandos in Rogue One. Uh, you can tell because if you look at the front of it, you've got this very distinctive tube above this I wouldn't call it a handguard, but it's a forward uh, grip on the weapon. And also, uh, just the profile of it is, is unmistakable to me that it was definitely based on the A300. I've had some conversations with people on, <laughs> on the uh, internet about this, but um, it, it is the A300, I'm almost certain. And so, being that I have several uh, of the uh, Jenner, so Rogue One Nerf Blasters, I decided, well, I'll just base mine on that. Now, in fairness, there aren't any really clear pictures in profile of Dominic's blaster, but having spoken with him at length about it and seeing... Uh, several different fan depictions based upon how he's described it uh, there's there's a few key components number one it's definitely an a300 Dominic is not a big gun guy he he has freely admitted that he doesn't really know uh, from looking at the one that he had he couldn't tell me for sure but having looked at those pictures I, I was like yeah I'm pretty sure this is what it is couple other things that are distinctive about his uh, blaster is instead of a stock, it has this canister on the back. Now, Dominic said that it was basically, it was an airsoft uh, type canister, which I, I pretty much concurred with. That's what it looks like. From what we can tell, it's supposed to have some kind of a, of a gas that helps, you know, fuel the blaster. The other really distinctive thing about his blaster is the uh, the dagger 
everybody just freaks out about this. It's one of the coolest things uh, about the weapon. You know, uh, everybody who knows the character knows this blaster, and this blaster is carried by only one person, and that is the gecko. And so, you know, it's the blaster is almost as iconic as the character himself. So, for me, um, you know, coming up with this replica, there were a couple of challenges. Uh, the the base weapon, not a problem. I've got several of the Jin or so uh, Nerf blasters that commonly referred to as the A300. Um, that wasn't going to be a problem. But there's a couple design challenges that I was going to run into, and the first of which was, okay, um, the canister. Am I going to really try and mount an airsoft metal canister to the back of a plastic Nerf blaster? And there was a couple of reasons why I decided not to do that. The first of which is the expense. These uh, canisters are not cheap, and uh, in order to utilize the canister, you have to have a coupling. So then you've got to get the coupling, and then you've got to find a way to mount that to a plastic Nerf blaster. Uh, and, and that was the second consideration, was the weight of this particular item. You know, and it, I just thought, you know, I've seen this profile before. I know that there's got to be an alternative. And I realized where I'd seen it, and that was uh, at the grocery store. <laughs> you know, uh, it basically, uh, if you look at the canister, it's very similar to those used by uh, certain bottled water companies. I think Smart Water and Life Water both utilize a similar canister and I was like well shoot now that would be easy er to deal with because number one you're not gonna have the weight issue and number two I was fairly certain that I'd be able to mount the uh, the bottle cap to the end cap on the a300 so okay figured that out the next thing was the muzzle extension, and lastly, um, the the scope. Now, if you've seen many of the blasters that are used in Star Wars, they generally don't use a regular scope. There's usually some kind of funky uh, thing that they cobble together from a bunch of different pieces of a bunch of different things, and they're very rarely a functional scope. Uh, they're made to look cool, but you know you generally can't look through them and utilize them as a scope. This blaster has a real scope on it, and that real scope was very similar to the scope that the Cassian Andor uh, version of the A300 came with except it looked like they had turned it around backwards. So that's what I went with. I ordered a Nerf Modulus um, accessory package. It came with a tripod, or actually it's a bipod mount, a barrel extension, and this particular scope. And I got it for about five bucks from Walmart. The next thing that I looked at was the barrel or rather the muzzle um, extension. And if you look on the, the screen capture, you can see that it, it's it's like, uh, it's got a barrel shape and then it's got kind of a ring shape on the end of it, on the end of the muzzle. And the ring looks distinct from the actual uh, barrel extension, I guess you could call it. And so, you know, I was looking online, and I finally found something that looked somewhat similar. And uh, I 
contacted the uh, the person who makes them and talked to them about the project, and I ended up ordering one. And nicely enough, they actually sent me two, which will will be uh, fortuitous, as you will see later. Now, the next thing I had to do was kind of I put the pieces down, and I uh, needed some clarification from Dominic about where exactly the dagger went. Now, when Dominic and I talked, you know, we, we, you've, if you've seen the artwork on his page, uh, Lair of the Gecko, um, there's there's a few different pictures of him and this blaster. This blaster is very distinctive because, not just because of, the, of the, the tank coming off the back of it, but more importantly, because of this dagger that comes down off the bottom of it, like where a magazine would normally be, you, you know, that might be like uh, what some people would call a banana clip, which is, number one, it's not a clip. Number two, is not a banana. But, you know, it's that kind of like an AK-47, you know, shaped magazine uh, that the, uh, the A300 doesn't really have. The A300 is based on AR-15. So, yeah, you know, you don't normally have that. I mean, the AR-15 does have a 30-round magazine. It does have somewhat of that type of a shape. But in this case, that wasn't what was being utilized. This was actually a dagger that seemed to me to actually be fitted to the bottom of the magazine well. Maybe it was attached to a short magazine, but, you know, the dagger definitely seemed to be to be coming down off of uh, a magazine well. Now, on the Nerf Blaster, there is a magazine well that holds this plastic Nerf magazine. But then, uh, if you look at the A300 and its predecessor, the A280, uh, there's two magazines that are kind of back-to-back. And, you know, that was kind of what made it distinctive. Uh, basically, they kind of took two AR-15 magazines and they kind of staggered them. And uh, so my thought was, you know, there's the one that's right in front of the trigger. And then there's the one that is the, uh, the one that's just molded in plastic. So you've got the removable one and the one that's not. My thought was that the dagger is actually coming down out of the one that's in the front. So I kind of, once I had the components, I kind of mocked it up by setting it out, laying out the pieces where I thought they would be. And then I sent a picture to Dominic. I says, hey, uh, was, was the dagger here or was it here? And uh, he pretty much confirmed to me that I was, I was on the money where I thought it was going to be. So now I have, my, <laughs> you know, my marching orders. Now I know where I'm going to go with this thing. And he also mentioned another thing about the dagger. Then most people in their versions, either artistically or uh, other people have, have done uh, you know, mock-ups of what they think the blaster looks like. Um, he told me that the dagger itself wasn't really skinny. It was kind of a thick piece of almost like rusty metal is what he said it looked like. And it was about two to three inches long and about an inch thick. And he said that, uh, you know, the bottom of it kind of tapered down, but it wasn't really like a sharp dagger. So I was like, okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. And that was one of my biggest challenges with this project. But now that I know where everything was supposed to be, I was able to go ahead and get started.